I wonder if you've been on the quest for a really nice fake wrap bodice that is easy to sew, has a lot of nice coverage here on the chest that you don't need camis underneath or pins. I'm going to show you a dress just like that today. Sneak peek, so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name's Karina and this is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today I cannot swipe the smile off my face. I finished the dress that I'm going to share with you just this morning and I actually haven't taken it off. I've taken it off now and put something else so I can actually show you the dress. <laughs> so this dress that I'm talking about is a Miri wrap dress from Wardrobe by Me. I had been eyeing it for a really long time and I really like the style. It is a faux or fake wrap bodice style. The collar is constructed like a short collar with these facings that fold over to the inside. The right bodice is the one that goes on the top and it has three little pleats diagonally there hitting that waist seam. And the left one is the one that goes tucked in behind the right one. One. so it wraps all the way around the waist seam is described to hit above the natural waist about one and a half inches above the natural waist and the skirt is fitted at the waist and the hips and then it flares out that is my favorite type of skirt the sleeves are super simple it's just a drop shoulder and they're finished there with a sleeve band this pattern can be made as a top and also three different lengths for skirts if it's a dress this style is for knit fabrics and the ones that drape nicely i think will look better those pleats on the front are just going to drape nicer if your fabric is not too thick or too structured this type of jersey or knit fabric does have to have some spandex elastane or lycra content in there so you know modo ity rayon spandex cotton lycra if it's not too stiff not too structured i've chosen an ity fabric for my version can this work with a woven fabric fabric the quick answer is that these styles that are designed to be made with stretchy fabrics where the measurements are smaller than you they won't work in a woven even if you size up even if you make two or three sizes larger to make it in a woven just it's not going to fit the neckline is going to gape your armhole is going to gape and the fit overall is just not going to be right so i would suggest sticking to <laughs> working with a neat fabric and you know the answer sometimes isn't as yes or no like I'm giving an answer right now if the question is the other way around when you have a design made for woven fabrics can it work in a knit fabric and that's when the answer can be yes sometimes it can but rarely rarely if ever the other way around when the design has negative ease when it counts for that stretch of the fabric to fit the bust to fit the waist in the way that it's intended in this case the wrapping of that bodice there counts on that negative ease so that it will hug against your chest and not flop open when you wear the wrap bodice you know the pattern is available in sizes 0 to 24 and is drafted for a height of 5 foot 6 the largest measurements available in this pattern for the bust is a 48 and a half inch bust circumference and for the hips 51 and a half inches. I chose a size 16, straight size 16, because this pattern is drafted for neat fabrics. There is negative ease into the drafting. So that means that the finished garment measurements that you see on the chart are smaller than what the body measures. So for my size, for my size 16, there is two inches of negative ease at the bust. It means that the bust will be nicely fitted. Two inches of negative ease is a really appropriate amount to have negative ease at the bust. It won't look super tight and it won't look floppy as if it were having positive ease or measuring the same as my bust. For the hip area, there is negative ease also, but just one inch, so it's not much. Your fabric is stretchy, so it'll just fit nicely on the body without looking sloppy or just oversized. I mentioned when I was describing the features of the pattern that the waist seam is intended to be above the natural waist. It, the pattern describes it. It also says if you want to bring it to your natural waist, use a shorten and lengthen line because there are shorten and lengthen lines on the bodice pieces. I measured the pattern flat measuring and determined that I needed for my bodice length one and a quarter inches and that is what I added there. I chose view B which is the shortest of the dresses. I also measured that although there are finished measurements on the pattern from the center back from your neck down there is a finished garment measurement there for the length of these versions and I determined I needed view B which was a shorter dress 
but a tad longer. So I just cut that one inch longer than view B, so a tad longer. This dress does not have many pattern pieces. You have different bodice pieces for the right and the left, of course. They aren't the same, so you have one for the right that has the pleats, you have one for the left. You have a back piece that's cut on the fold. In this case, I'm doing a little change and I'm cutting two of those because I want my back to be double layer on the fabric. My fabric is very lightweight, very slinky, very flimsy. And when I work with fabrics like that, I like having two layers of fabric at the back. And the front, if it's a bodice that is not a wrap, if it's a, a normal bodice. But in this case, the wrap is okay. I'll have two layers of fabric on the front anyway. And then you have a back skirt and a front skirt. The waist of the front skirt dips down a little bit into the center and the back one dips down a little less. <laughs> That's the difference between the front and the back. And then you have two little armbands to finish the sleeve. Wardrobe by Me recently uploaded a video on their channel showing a step by step on how to sew this dress. For sure you should check out the video on Wardrobe by Me's YouTube channel. I am doing the collar piece and the shoulder just a tad different from what's instructed but the same at the same time but a little bit different and I always just like sharing my take on a garment whether the designer has a video about it or not you know there are different takes to garment construction and I love sharing mine. So what you will see in Up Close and So Personal, which is a practical segment in every one of my videos, is the general construction of the dress, but mainly focusing on that neckline. It does seem a little bit harder than what you think at first, but once you see it done, it is so, so easy and so fast. I would say this is faster than doing a wrap bodice that has bands and other types of closure methods. It was very fast once it got going, and I'm very, very happy with the results. This is the back piece of the dress and I've actually cut another layer so that I can treat this as one piece but it's going to be two layers. ITY is very thin so this layer here it was cut on the fold and that will be the one that you see on the outside of the dress and to line the back I've cut an extra one from bits of the sides of the fabric and I do have a sneaky seam in the center back but it won't be seen because this is the side that's going to go inside of the dress so that's where my skin is going to be I'm just going to pin these two together and just pretend it's just one back piece in the way that I'm going to use it to sew it to the dress normal, I'm not going to change anything it's just that I'll have two layers on top of each other this is the bodice that when worn goes on the right side of the body this is the one that will be seen on top and this is the one that has pleats here on the bottom so I have pinned the pleats as per the marks. You have marks and then you just fold over. At the bottom, these pleats have been trued really nicely so you get a nice clean edge there. This is where the skirt gets put on top. So I flipped it, what you see is the bodice here. What you see now when I flipped it is the skirt underneath here. So this is the waist of the skirt. This is the bodice and this center here. When this is finished, this will be folded like this. So you need to follow the marks and fold this little corner down there and then sew it to the skirt but before I do anything else all this edge all along to the top here this little shape I'm going to serge it just to have a clean finished edge and then keep sewing okay so I have the front skirt down there at the bottom right sides together I've put the bodice that goes on the right side of the body the bodice that has the pleats and then I've pinned that all the way across the top on that edge that has that fold I have folded it over on the mark so this will be like a tight facing thing <laughs> that's how the neckline will be finished and that's why I surged all that edge previously now on top of this goes the bodice that goes on the left and that will meet right there on the side seams on top of there and then on this other side will be the area that needs to be folded like that like it was under there so I've got to pin this now again so there'll be three layers the left bodice first the right bodice then and then the skirt <music>
you've seen that seam already been done and now if I flip this I have both bodice pieces there attached to the skirt the one that goes on the front the one that crosses over on the back and now let's bring this all the way up here okay so I flipped it I have the bodice pieces looking this way there are the shoulder seams right there this is the neck piece and now these two pieces need to be put right sides together and that short end there need to be matched and sewn quarter inch seam allowance this is the back bodice here that I've sewn to the skirt to the back skirt piece now remember I am lining the back bodice so that's why you see the same on both sides I've got two layers and this fabric curls on the sides and slips everywhere so for these two that I want to treat as one piece I actually hand basted them all around the edges so this is going to be the opening for the arm shoulder seam the neckline they all basted together so it's not going to go anywhere and I can treat it as one piece so I've got the right side of the fabric up this way this is the center of the neckline on the back and I'll put a pin there to mark where it is because now we need to get the front bodice front pieces and align the top of that short collar there this is that little seam that I've sewn there and I've pressed it open, it's a small seam allowance, a quarter of an inch and we have this shape here, that is the shoulder seam then comes this collar piece and here is the other shoulder seam so this bit here on the top is what needs to align to the back neckline and from a point there, remember this uses very small seam allowance that needs to match that corner there and at this little other corner this point there needs to match that corner there so I'm just going to align everything pin it okay this is the piece of the neckline here that will be the collar there and then this is the shoulder seam and I have drawn out my seam allowance that is a quarter of an inch there with a friction pen and I'm just going to do a stay stitch there short stitch length just to reinforce this area and I'm going to do that on both of these corners once I've stay stitched I'm going to clip into that corner there so that this can extend and then I can actually sew the shoulder seams the collar and then the shoulder seams again in just one continuous stitch instead of doing it in two parts <music> Sewing this little area as a stay stitch is a little bit difficult with this type of knit because it's so flimsy, so lightweight and it just wants to shift around. Okay, so you can see that done and I'm just going to snip into this little corner there. And now I can sort of extend this and sew it all in one go. I'll do that for both sides and then I'll carefully pin again. Okay what you can see here is the shoulder seam. This is the front, one of the front bodices. This is the back here. You can see that that's the right side of the fabric but it's actually the inside of the garment because I'm doing it double. This is where I clipped into that corner and where I will carefully have to pivot making sure I don't get any packets on this side. And then comes the neckline here that center seam from the collar and then we go across to the other pivot area there where I've snipped and stay stitched and then we go off to the shoulder and it'll be done all in one continuous go close to this area here where I'll need to pivot and I'm touching so that I don't get any pockets so I'm moving with my fingers all the fabric to this side making sure I don't get a pucker and I'll gladly hand crank a little bit to make sure Okay, that is 
that area there. I'm happy I don't have a paka or a little pleat or anything. And on this side, the same. Here is the front bodice that you're seeing wrong sides up. We have just sewn that collar there and you can see that center seam. I'm just gonna flip that to the back there, flip it. And now we have these little points and these need to be sewn to that shoulder seam right there. These are what are going to be like the facings of the front neckline. It'll have a fold and that's how the front neckline is finished inside. So I basically have to do the same thing I've done I just have to do it again <laughs> so I will snip into that little corner again and then I'll sew that partial shoulder seam and then I'll meet this one with that one there actually this can be done on just the serger okay so I've pinned that tiny little shoulder seam there that is actually what's folded in to form the facing on the front of the bodices I snipped into there to mimic what has been done on the other one so it will actually allow this to happen like that and then I've pinned along the neckline snipped into there as well so that can extend and now I'm just going to serge all this together in one go and I'm going to serge from the edge of the shoulder all of that because that's still raw you know so it will be just one continuous serging <music> I'm just going to do like a little curve and now I'm on the neckline here I'm on this other little area here that is where I snipped nice this looks inside this is the back that's the shoulder seam surged that little curve I did there and that catches the neckline surged so it is pretty neat inside actually it looks nice so this is the inside of the back when I wear it, it's gonna be like that and there's a little collar and then that's like the facing that is folded onto the bodice that crisscrosses over so all that's left to do now is very simple, sew both side seams. So this is the armhole there, after I've sewn the side seam, it's just putting sleeve bands on it and that's it. Super easy and this was really interesting to construct. This is my dress. I love this fabric, although it did create some issues with pattern placement. You can see there are some very, very large circles on the print. Circles everywhere actually. And I was very mindful to make sure I didn't get a circle like this on my bust as such, right on the apex. This little circle still wanted to be on my bust, but fortunately not on the front of my bust. It's like on the side, sort of more on the side when I wear it on my body. And I was quite concerned about that while I was sewing because I knew it was there. And I did try to shift everything around, but I couldn't really shift it that much because of the fabric consumption, you know, <laughs> that I'd measured and that this wasn't right at the apex and it's not, it's like to the side. That's what you get for choosing prints like this with these huge circles. I think it's a really cool print. I love the tones of blues, beige, and there's like wine color in there, like a dark red, and I love that. Here on the inside, you can see the same fabric and that's because I've done it in two layers. Otherwise, you would see the inside of my fabric would be white if I hadn't of lined the back piece. I love doing that. This fabric specifically was curling and sliding on each other. It's not that easy to work with. So I basted both my back pieces along the edges together, just with long stitches. It took no time at all just to hold them in place. And then I just pretended I had one piece. It didn't really change the construction method at all. That is that center seam that you saw in the construction video, folded in, and then that's all being surged together like that and it forms like a tight facing because it's all folded in like that for the wrap here 
and the same for the wrap on the other side. Super cool, super fun to sew, not hard at all. This is the sleeve with a drop shoulder, little band there. It gives really good cover for the arm. Like it's not short, it's, it's quite nice. It covers the whole shoulder and the band really, really brings that in and it doesn't gape or anything like that. So that was super easy to sew, extremely easy to sew actually. I love that. Here you can see the waist seam and you can see the pleats there like that. Super nice. And the back seam is just plain. There's nothing special on the back. Unfortunately, I had to cut that circle because it, the circle was just too big and I couldn't get it to fit in the fabric otherwise. But that's okay. Look, this morning, I have to tell you, um, I have a, a bit of a habit. When I'm getting ready to take pictures outside, I always go and show my husband what I made. I've been doing that for years. I show my, my son too. I can always tell when something's a sort of hit in my house because they both like it and they're like, oh, and they like it. My husband really liked this dress. He told me it looked really good on me and that I should make more. When my husband tells me he really likes a style, I listen and I make more. You can see that is the area that was folded in the early stages. And that is why I surged this edge right there first. And I did that to both bodices before attaching everything to the skirt so that it's nice and neat. You can see the wrap goes all the way to the side and the one that's tucked in there also goes all the way to the side. And it's such a clever way to do a neckline like this. Um, it covers, it, it, it crosses over very nicely here on the chest. There's no danger of anything gaping. You won't need a pin or anything, so good. And the back looks like that because I've got two layers. This pattern uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance for the whole garment. And if you look at the video produced by the pattern company, you will see that most of the steps are completed only on the serger. My serger doesn't have that strength and though I've tried to sew only with it, I'm not happy with the seam just with the serger. That's why I always end up sewing my seams with the sewing machine right there. I use a quarter of an inch foot, I use a shallow zigzag, and I like the seam with my sewing machine. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love sewing my knits with my sewing machine. I'm always just happier with the result, and I know that the seam will last and it won't split open a little bit because the serger just does not have the strength, in my opinion, at least my serger, to just do a seam and forget about it. That's why I sew my knits a little bit differently. The hem was eternal and maybe you can see the twin needling there. It took ages. I hand basted it first because this fabric was impossible. But even though the fabric was annoying to work with, I love how it feels on. It feels really cool to the skin. It drapes beautifully and I'm very, very happy with this dress. This is my dress. I've chosen UB one inch longer than UB actually to hit right above my knee. Lovely volume of the skirt. I love the look overall. Very nice dress. Up closer you can see the skirt. I've done a simple twin needle folding up, top stitching. And the bodice is hitting at my natural waist after I added one and a quarter inches above the bodice at the shorten and lengthen line. And it is at my waist, otherwise it would be too high for me. I am a little bit taller than what the pattern is drafted for. So I'm glad I made that adjustment. And I think the skirt is really nice. Just enough flare here while keeping it fitted here at the hips. So it doesn't create a lot of volume. And this is my favorite type of skirt. Up higher on the bodice, there is the seam line. This is the right side of my body and this is the bodice that crosses over the left one that is underneath and this is where those little pleats are i really like that drape there that they create across diagonally i think that looks always really pretty and the bodice underneath is plain it's just straight and you can see it wraps all the way to here and the one on the back also wraps all the way to here so the crossover is a lot and that makes it a really safe wrap type bodice. Nothing is ever gonna fall open or gape and I don't need to put a pin anywhere. So I really, really like that. Having two layers of fabric at the back when the fabric is so lightweight and you know, slinky, 
for prevent having the lines from your undergarments showing and it just looks nice and feels nicer supportive there at the back at the front that's not needed because you've got two layers crossing over each other this drop type shoulder with a sleeve band there looks really nice it's nice and closed nothing's on show there and the band is always so much easier to sew than any other way and it looks really nice super nice finish there at the sleeves and then you can see where this crosses over it's super nice i've got nothing showing and it's so easy the fabric is just folded inside like that no bands nothing of that so it was really easy to put together and you can see how the neck comes up here with that little collar it's not like a short collar because it doesn't fold over but the construction is like that and it's really interesting to get this to fold under and form like a tight facing that's just tucked in there on both sides i really like that so in summary a huge thumbs up from me i really like the style i feel really good in this dress i put it on and i feel amazing straight away my husband liked it so that is important too so i'll be surely making these because it is an easy make and really nice design the little pleats there everything i just really like it any wrap styles that you need to layer a cami underneath or just put a pin I find that it's a very constant thing I have to do for myself with a lot of the wrap styles I sew and it, it, the pin is okay I can live with the pin what I cannot live with is putting a cami underneath uh, that would be so uncomfortable and just an extra layer I don't need for the heat so you know if I can get away with wearing a pin I'm okay but with this style that doesn't need that and I can just wear it and be happy, it is so nice and so comfortable. I am very happy. And I didn't need to manipulate the neckline to hit higher or do any of that that I have done with other styles in the past. You know, I have raised necklines so that they cross over higher, that sort of thing. And I didn't need to do that with this one. So I like that. A little while ago, I tried a free pattern by Wardrobe by Me and it was another wrap style, but designed for wovens. I was extremely happy with that. I loved how the pattern was drafted, the instructions, everything. And now I've made this lovely dress and I am officially hooked. I absolutely love the styles, such a good experience in the sewing and seeing that there's a few videos available for like the harder techniques is awesome on their channel. So um, you can expect to be seeing more makes from this brand in this channel. <laughs> There's one that has just been released and it's still on its release say a week and it's called the India Camisole and I've been looking at it and I'm going to go and get it. It's a bias cut cami with really nice interesting details on the neckline. It looks to be like a really fun make that needs you to slow down a little bit to get it done nicely but it's totally my style and I'm going to go ahead and get that one. If you wanted to try it for yourself and you are inspired by my version, you might want to go and get it through my affiliate link. That doesn't cost you any extra, but I receive a small commission from any sales that go through there. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You will love this dress as much as I do. I have been feeling amazing in my dress. I've been wearing it all day. And the fact that my family loves it a lot means a lot to me too. I know I will be sewing more of these. I hope you enjoyed seeing this collar construction. Super different, super interesting, super fun. I hope you give it a go. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another sewing video. Bye. Ooh.